All right, so today I want to talk about combining async await with fetch. So we can wrap a function with the keyword async, and that allows us to put things that are asynchronous inside of here, but treat them as if they are synchronous. By adding the keyword await in front of fetch, we can make it wait until the result comes back. So I want to look at doing this and doing it in a practical way that's not going to cause us any problems. All right, so I have a simple function set up here. I've already given it the keyword async so I can treat fetch the way I want. Uh, I've got a bad URL and a good URL. So this one's going to fail. There's going to be problems. We won't be able to retrieve that because it's not a full address. And then I've got a good one. I'm generating a random number, rounding it off. So half the time it's going to be good, half the time it's going to be bad. Uh, and I'm just choosing one of these two values to save in my URL that value. That way, each time I refresh the page, it's going to call one or the other. All right. Now we're going to create a variable called data. This is going to hold the response that I'm going to get back from fetch. Now, if I did this on its own, if I did this fetch URL, that's not going to work because this command is going to be run immediately. It's going to return a promise. So this will be a promise object. It's not going to be the data that's coming back. It's not even going to be the response object. It's going to be the promise. If we put a wait in front of it, now we're going to wait and we'll actually get the response object being put into here. But I want to get the data that comes back from the response. I'm going to call the JSON method to extract the JSON data from the response. So, well, we can do this. We can say then and inside of here, we're going to get the response object and then we can call response.json. All right. Now we're sort of getting this to work, but we can still shorten this and make it work. If we got rid of all this and we're just going to call dot JSON, what we need to call dot JSON on is this piece right here, the thing that's coming back. So if I wrap parentheses around this whole thing and I put another await inside of here, what we're doing is we're going to run the fetch. That's going to be creating a promise. The promise will resolve into a response object. The response object now is going to be passed to the JSON method. That will turn it into the data. It'll extract the JSON data from the response object and the await will await for this, which also creates a promise. So we make our fetch call, we get the response object back, we're waiting for that. When we get the response object, we're going to wait for that to be converted into the JSON or have the JSON extracted from that response object, and then it'll be assigned to our data variable. And that works great. We can then console log our data object, and we run that and it worked. I was lucky enough that I got the actual value coming here. Now, if I refresh this, okay, it worked that time. Worked, it worked. There we go. There's the problem. If there is any problem with my code, with the person's network connection, this error is going to happen. It didn't call the fetch. It could not call this as a valid value, as a valid URL. So we get stuck at this point. Our code is crashed. Our page is crashed. We're not able to do anything more. So we need to use the catch. I mean, it's best practice that whenever you use any sort of promise that you have a catch attached to that. All right. So that's going to go inside of here. It has to be attached to the fetch. We've gotten away from the then by using two awaits, but we still need to have a catch in here to deal with those potential problems. So let's, um, let's call another function. We'll say handle error. That's going to be the name of our function. We'll put it down here. There we go. Now we have a function that's going to be called when something goes wrong. Okay, great. I've got a function and I could do console dot, let's say warn or error and write out that error message. Okay. And there it is. So I got the error message being logged out. That's great. But now this error has changed. And that's because 
I returned undefined from here, and whatever I return from this function is going to come back and be placed inside of here. This now has to be something that the JSON method can turn into an actual JSON object. All right, so we have to return something from here, which is going to be an object. So we're going to create our very own response object so we can call the JSON method because I can't just put anything here. It does have to be a response object or a body object to be able to call this method. So we'll create our response object. Say new response. There we go. Inside of here, we can just put a string. Great. So I can create a new string, but if I'm going to be converting it to JSON, it's got to be a string that will be able to turn into a JSON object. And that means we're going to create our own object and we're just going to stringify it. So this will be a stringified object inside of the response. The response comes up here. This will extract the object from the string that we're creating here. So inside of this, here's our object that we're going to create. And let's say it's going to have a property called code. We'll just say that this is going to be our HTTP status code of 400 bad request. And let's have a message inside of here saying something along the lines of stupid network error. Okay, so we have our object. The object is being stringified. That is becoming the contents of the response object. The response object is being sent back up here and replacing all of this. So then the response object has a JSON method. So it is able to extract that object and put it inside of here. Okay, so there's it functioned. We'll run it a few more times till it fails. There we go. So we got the warning coming up that there was an issue and this object was passed up back up here and it actually was converted into an object. We now have the ability to look at this and we can say if data.code and data.code equals 400, there's a problem and we can handle it however we want. We can just exit from this function if we want, or we can write something out. And if there is no problem, then we can go on and do this. Okay, so there's my error. Makes it look like there's something wrong. If I run that, you can see that I'm getting either the result or it's blank. So we are good to go. All right, so a copy of this code is going to be a link to in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.